number 16. How will each of the following affect the rate of the reaction? And then we have CO2 gas plus NO2 gas yields CO2 gas plus NO gas. If the rate law for the reaction is rate equals K times the concentration of NO2 times the concentration of CO. So let's write down that rate law. So we got rate equals K, which is the rate constant, times the concentration of NO2 times the concentration of CO. Okay, so once they give you a rate law, this will be way more important than any balanced equation, especially when we're dealing with rates and kinetics for chemistry. So if they give you a rate law, we have to go based off of what is given. Um, sometimes the rate law can match up with the balanced equation, but sometimes it doesn't have to, and that's okay. Sometimes they will do that to you just to make sure that you know how to use your rate laws. So now what's going to happen to that rate if we are increasing the concentration of CO from 0 0.02 molarity to 0 0.06 molarity? Okay, so we want to know how is this rate going to be affected with this change in concentration, right? And concentration is molarity. That's what these brackets mean. These brackets mean that you're dealing with molarity. Do you always have to be in molarity? No, you could be in pressure values, you could be in, in ATMs, but nine times out of 10, you will be dealing with molarity values. And it seems like for this one, we're starting off with a 0 0.02 molarity to a final molarity of 0 0.06. So if my initial concentration or my initial molarity for CO was 0 0.02 and I am now at a concentration of 0 0.06, how did I get there? And when you're dealing with changes, you always deal with either multiplication or division, but never addition and subtraction. So we say to ourselves, okay, if I started off with 0 0.02, how, by multiplying or dividing, will I get to 0 0.06? Did you say times by three? 0 0.02 times three is 0 0.06. You could figure out the, uh, the factor by, you could also do 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.02, and that will get you how much it was changed by. So if I started off with 0 0.02, I'm increasing by three times the amount. This is the same thing as saying that you tripled your molarity, or you increased it by three times, or you went up by threefold. All of these uh, wordings means the same exact thing. So we know that my change for the CO is going up by three times. And if you are inputting change values, not actual molarities, but if you're inputting your change values, that means that you're going to get a change out for your reaction rate. And that's totally fine because we don't know what the starting rate was and we don't know what the initial rate is. All we know or that we can find out is how much the rate is going to change. Okay. So now the question is, well, what am I going to do with this NO2 value? Well, they didn't tell me that the NO2 was changing. Keep in mind, if we're turning this over into things that change, we only care about the values that are going to change. And since they only told us that, you know, CO is the one that's changing and they didn't say anything about NO2, we're going to assume that for this example, this is not changing. And if it's not changing, they didn't give us any values. Goodbye. You get rid of it. Now we're down to the K value. K is a rate constant. And just like it says, it's a constant value for each specific reaction. So every specific reaction, every problem that you're going to do, chances are you will have a different rate constant. There's not one rate constant that wins, you know, that is the, you know, the only rate constant. But um, for a specific equation, the constant value is not going to change. So if this is not going to change or is not changing, do we care about the rate constant? No, we do not. So bye-bye, uh, toodaloo. <laughs> and um, now we just have a very simple equation where the change in the rate 
is only reliant on that change in the concentration of CO. And we said that we know that the CO is increasing by three times. So let's just plug that in. Rate equals three. Generally, there is an order that goes with every reactant. But if you don't see a number in the upper right-hand corner, that just means that it's first order. So technically, this would be three to the first, and then my rate would equal three. Now, how do we read this? Remember, it's always a change. And since it's a, whole, um, a, a bigger number, right? It's greater than one, it's not a fraction. That also means that you're increasing. But if you are increasing in your concentration, you will be increasing in your rate. So the three means that the rate will increase by three times, or you could say threefold, or you can say the rate will triple. All these words mean the same exact thing and they're all correct. And that is the answer. So in this case, the reaction will also increase by three times, mainly because that order was raised to the first. And that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and thank you so much for coming here, viewing the videos, watching them, and you know doing awesome on your tests. Um, I love talking to you guys in the comments. I try to get back as much as I can in my free time. And if you wanna help us out, hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for all the support. And I think that's it. You could also check the link in the descriptions. Uh, we try to update them with more goodies as you know time goes on and you know uh, more stuff that we are able to produce as time goes on. We really want to uh, you know make this a great community for education. So just keep checking back, all right? Okay. I hope you're doing well out there and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.